Jared Polin, a Pharaoh knows photo. Dot com here with another raw, raw edit of the week. We have something going on with benches in weird places. This is probably the third bench that we've done that is located in an interesting place. So this looks like it's in some Alps area. Looks cool. I would love to be sitting there. I would love to see what's over the edge of this cliff because it kind of gives you that feeling. Is this the edge of the cliff? Is there anything else over there? How would we do this? I don't know. I'm sure that Greg has some interesting way to do this, but let's see how Jared would do this first. Hey, look, I pumped up my contrast. Who knew? I don't want to go black and white unless we're going Ansel Adams-ish. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Let's get rid of all of our details like I always do. I want more contrast. I wish there was like to infinity and beyond in contrast. I wish that existed. I totally, totally, totally do. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, it's going to mess with my... It's going to mess with my bench. No, don't delete the photo. I want to delete that. I want to delete that. What does this do? Uh, the storm clouds are coming. I don't like it. It's too gay for me. Not gay. I don't mean gay. And I just mean it's too over the top. Stuff that I don't normally do. Maybe we'll dodge and burn. Maybe we'll try that. What do we have selected here? Exposure. Let's... Let's burn... Oh, uh, yeah, we'll just do the whole thing. Why not? This could be an HDR lover's dream again. No. Goodbye. Reset. Whew. I'm starting all over again. Because I am, again, when it comes to editing this type of stuff... It's not my forte. Greg is more of the editor when it comes to playing around with this stuff. It's probably playing with curves. Hey, let's drag some of these things around. These things that I don't know what they are. No, I'm just kidding. Whoa. That's crazy. These buttons are interesting. How did I do that? I do not know. Oh, okay. Nothing uh, uber duber extreme. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Yeah. What would black and white do here? Yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't know, but I want to I want to play with the color more. Yeah, let's pump up the sky. Let's make the temperature a little more warm. A little less warm, a little bit more warm. Change the exposure slightly. Now we're doing it. Now we're there. Yeah, some vibrance. No, no. That's good. Look at that. Minus seven. I'm liking the minus seven right now. I'm going to go with that. What's this button do? I'm not a big fan of just like the background being color. Sorry, the back, the foreground being color and we took out all the blue. That to me is over weird. Or is it? Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. For all of those of you guys out there who thought I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to be that guy. But you can do it. You can edit whatever you want. I'm going to see where this looks. Where we started. Flat and boomy. There we go. Clarity is good. My general sharpening. 
Anything else? Anything else? A little bit more yellow, and there we go. So that's where I'm going to go with it. I can't wait to see what Greg did to his. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this was shot with the Nikon D3000 with an 18-105 to 105 kit lens shot at ISO 100, 1 1,000th 1, 1, of a second at 5.6. Greg, let's see what you did. Why all of a sudden did I get the feeling that I want to sit down? Hmm. Anyway, cool photo. I like it. Let's see what our settings were. Cause, oh, here we go. 1 1,000th one of a second at 5.6 ISO 100. That's good. Settings are right on where they should be, especially shooting at 5.6. And uh, maybe we're a little underexposed, actually, after looking at our histogram. But let's find out once we uh, start working on our on our image here. All right, so contrast, you know that always contrast, 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 contrast. That's starting to make this punch in here. I think I'm gonna leave vibrance alone, but I think I want to go with a little saturation, but I don't want to go overboard. Uh, I think the temperature is good, but you know what? Let's see what happens when we make this a neutral gray. Yeah, see, I like how that gray contrasts, Get, making that neutral, and it's really contrasting well with everything else. So let's see if we can make that work or not with our other saturation, because it did decrease our color a little bit. And you know what? Let's go into our HSLs here. And I'm going to bring my blues down. Saturate them a little bit and make them a little punchier. Let's go too far and come back. That was definitely too far. That's it. I love the warm tones and the cold tones in this. And I think that's why I liked having this as a mid-tone and have no color in it at all. Uh, that, that just works for me. I think I like that. Uh, do we want blue to have a little more saturation? Oops, wrong way. Yeah, that's good. Just a touch. Just a touch. Definitely making it punch. I will definitely say that. Because there's where we started, and there's where we're at now. It's definitely starting to punch. So let's see. Exposure just a little. Yep, I think that's good. You know what? I know what would happen if we gave a little gradient up from the bottom here and darken that area. We're gonna do it. It can't be much. Yeah, just a little, just to help the saturation level and help to balance the two of them together. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like how the two of them are are mixed now. Sometimes I like to kind of step back from the image to see how I did, and I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, definitely don't want split tone. I think detail is probably fine. It's nice and sharp on the bench as it should be. So that's good. Uh, lens corrections. Don't think it needs any lens corrections this week. And um, I'd say our vignette should stay the same. And you know what? I want to play with camera calibration on this. So let's um, let's create a virtual copy. And uh, there we go. And let's uh, reset everything. And let's see how we do with a with a camera calibration. I'm gonna go with the uh, camera vivid. I'm gonna start there. It's got kind of a purpley tone there, doesn't it? Get my let's get everything situated here. Um, all right, so let's start over again. See if I like it or if I don't like it. You know what? I'm going to go real far on exposure this time 
and really bring up my blacks. I am going to go with my neutral again there. I definitely want the extra saturation again. Looking green, isn't it? 4,900, that's too cold. I think I want to go back to that 53, 54 area. There we go. It's a little warmer in here, that's good. All right, so let's push our blacks even a little farther. Same with our contrast. See, that's just too much. I think we're, we're there we go. That's looking a little bit better. It was, the blacks were a little heavy there for a second. So, um, let's see if we can compare the two of these. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, so um, in this case, is that com really comparing the two of them? Let's see. Yeah, in this case, starting out with that camera calibration, I think really worked. I like that image on the right. I like how it's it's a little brighter. It's a little, I don't know, a little bit different. Um. Sometimes that works. Maybe we need a little bit more saturation in the blues on this image. So let's see what happens when we do that. Let's see. In here. And here. And increase just a little. And then luminance. We want to bring that down because we want it to be darker. Try the sky instead. That's good. What can we do with our tone curve? Maybe that'll punch it. No, I liked it better as it was. That's it. That gave me a good amount of contrast. That's good. I like it. Yeah, I like this one much better than this one. And I think it actually has to do with the white balance. It being a little warmer down in here and getting a little bit more saturation. I think this one was too cold. And so I'm going to stick with this one. And as you saw, I started off with that camera calibration panel. And uh, so that'll take your raw files and get you really close to how to how the camera would have processed it if you were shooting JPEG but as you all know you shouldn't be shooting JPEG because you can then take your image and do whatever you want with it afterwards this is a great example of that but still applying those that camera calibration profile that is is built into your camera especially in the Nikons you have all those settings in, I forgot what the panel is called because I don't use it very often, but a uh, good example of using that. There you go. So let's see how Jared did. Any predictions? Hmm. Let's see. All right, and we're back, and Greg is wearing the same shirt as me. Greg, why are you wearing the same shirt as me? I think you're wearing the same shirt as me because I recorded this video first. It's true, but I didn't know that. <laughs> so mine's on the left, Greg. Yours is on the right, and I do have a question for you. Yep. Why is yours out of focus and mine's not? I don't know. What'd you do to it? I didn't touch yours. It's not out of focus. Really? Because it You're doesn't. Full of it. It doesn't look sharp. Look at look at this. It's perfectly sharp. Well, after I zoom in on it, it's painful to look at. You probably it probably hasn't rendered a larger version or something. I don't know. I don't know. What do you what do you think? I, I wish mine was a little brighter. But what what do you think? What what were you doing to this photo? Well, actually, I did it twice. And the first version, I started off just as normal and just played with it and played with it. And then the second version, I actually used the camera calibration tools. Yeah, because it, yeah. And started off with the camera vivid and, you know, adjusted from there. Sure. And uh, that second version, I liked a lot better because it was a little poppier. So oh. I went with that. Funny thing is, we ended up pretty close to each other here. 
I think this is the first time that I think I outsaturated you. You did, and I went up with my boomification, vibrance, and uh, and stuff like that. It's just, I wish I was a little less flat. It looks a little less, it, mine looks too flat. It looks a little gray up in this area right around the chair. I mean, I it, wanted to mess with it. I wanted to play with the background. I wanted to try a few different things, but I didn't end up doing that, so... I don't know. I just I couldn't figure out how to just do a certain area and make that right. Maybe you'll have to start watching my videos again. No, because it's too much work to be put into one file to edit in my mind. Hey, you never know. It could be applied to a lot of files in the future. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So where do you think this is? No idea. Probably in Europe somewhere. Yeah? You think this is the same person that shot the other chairs that they sent in last time? Hey, you never know, was it? I, I don't know either. No idea. But their exposure was better. Yeah, yeah, this had to be probably manual exposure, because if it wasn't, you would have been exposing for the uh, background. Yep. Yeah, lo looking good. Good exposure. I like it. Good time of the day. So how many people you do you think are going to try some HDR when we give them the raw file to edit? Oh, I think everybody's going to try HDR on this. I don't think everybody, but it'd be interesting to see what they would do. It's still going to make it look more fake. I still don't think HDR looks real. Yeah, I just hope that they don't ruin it. But, you know, to each his own. Right. So, yeah, you got anything else to say about this one? No, I don't think so. My only thing I'm wondering now that I look at the photo a little closer is where is all this yellow stuff coming from? On the rocks. See all the yellow stuff on the rocks? Probably moss. I guess. Or sulfur. Okay. It's funny. I'm, I'm recording. Oh. It looks like paint. Yeah, it looks like something. I don't know what it is. Just wondering. Sulfur. See it? Yeah, it looks like paint. Oh, well. Whatever it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to see what everybody's going to do with this. Uh... It's, it's pretty interesting, all the different examples and samples and edits that people are doing. So definitely put it up in the forum, or you actually have to go into the forum in order to actually download the raw file. But feel free to do that. Make sure that you post all your changes and all your edits back into the forum so we can see what you did to see maybe if you're going to do better than Greg and I here, which in my case, I don't think it's going to be hard to do better than what I did. Um so I, I bet you guys are going to make better edits because, again, this is not my forte, editing benches and, and landscapes and stuff like that. So, yeah. How's that, Greg? I think that's about it. I love this guy and this cool image. Yeah, it, it, it is a cool image. And like I was saying in my video, I want to see what's over the cliff. It definitely makes you wonder what's over there. I agree. It does. And it could be nothing or it could be death. Yeah. Yeah. Love the low angle. That definitely makes this image... The only thing that I might have tried, which I, I don't know, maybe as a second or a third image, would be to uh, raise that second skyline or the, the far skyline above or below the bench. Right. And split it up more into thirds, uh, one third bottom, you know, and then a third is a, as a top third is the background. Sure. Uh, but again, I like this composition, but I think it just needs another version, another another try at it. And you really never know which one's going to end up being better. Right, yeah, that, I, I agree with you. So, let's see what you guys come up with. Don't kill us with too many HDRs, but let's see what you got. Uh, so, send the raw files for future editing purposes to froknosephoto at gmail.com. And I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So, good luck. Download that file. Enjoy the forum. Jared Poland, froknosephoto.com. See ya!